Good morning, everybody. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you to Gershom and Rachel Dandy for sponsoring this edition of Kabbalah Cafe in honor of Rafua Shlema. For Michal Zev Ben Genendel, he needs a bigger Rafua Shlema. Uh, he enjoyed very much to be uh, a couple of months ago when he came for Shabbos um, at Chabad of Rechavia. So he has a special connection. And hopefully our thought and the zuchut of our shir will be an extra special zuchut for his refuah shlema. Everybody say amen. Yefeh. Uh, thank you very much to Mordechai and Rayat uh, for, for broadcasting uh, and hosting this shir uh, live and all the other shirim. <clears throat> you, you might be aware that I'm of, often, I often do, sh- I usually give uh, the Zoom shirim different places from wherever I am. But I think this is the last place that I would ever think that I would do a shir from. I'm here in Haram Anuchot Cemetery, which is the place where my extended family, the family of my late uncle, Chezi Goldberg, of blessed memory, Hashem Yikom Damo, is, has gathered together and we just said to Hillen and did the Kaddish by his kever. And it's especially difficult because it's his 18th yard site. Who would dream it would be so long and the galut, the exile is really, really uh, hitting hard. Um, and so they're sort of in the middle. So I'm staying pretty close to that. I don't know if you can see in the background, but that's okay. And um, so towards the end of this year, hopefully we're going to wrap it up with uh, saying something special in honor and in memory of my uncle, Yechezkel HaKadosh, Yechezkel Iser Ben Yaakov Moshe. In the meantime, I would like to share with you an interesting Dvar Torah on the Parsha. Today, we read in the Chumash about about the actual exodus, the actual Yitziat Mitzrayim, the Pasuk says, Vayihi be'etzem ayom hazeh, hotzi Hashem et b'nei Yisrael me'eretz Mitzrayim al tzivotam. It was on this very day, in the middle of the day, that Hashem took out Am Yisrael from Mitzrayim with their whole... Uh, procession, their whole quote-unquote army. And so there's a lot to talk about in this parsha, but this is this might seem like a side issue, but it's a very interesting issue. The subject is that when Hashem told Am Yisrael to go out of Mitzrayim, Hashem made a point of it to say, you have your stick, and you have your bag, and you have your shoes on. What's the point of Hashem saying, you need to have your shoes on? Obviously, everybody knows that when you get dressed, you have your shoes. There must be a special message in connection with Yitziat Mitzrayim, the exodus of, from Mitzrayim, which might be connected to the subject of, of, uh, of shoes. In fact, there's an interesting um, research that has been done in America. What is the first thing that a person looks at, at their friend when you meet them? So there are a number of answers. Some say they look at the person's eyes. Others say they look at the person's watch. Others say they look at the person's shoes. Believe it or not, there's so much to see before the shoes. But apparently the shoes tells a lot about the person. And it also is uh, something which we need to invest in. We need to protect our feet. Because when our feet are protected, then we are healthy. The truth is, we also find in halacha an importance for shoes. Where do we find that? One of the morning blessings that we say right in the beginning before we even start davening is Sha'asali Kol Tzarki. We have uh, several short blessings right in the middle. And one of them is that Hashem has done for me all of my needs. So according to one of the opinions in Shulchan Aruch, that each time you do something, you need to say the bracha. So, for example, you open your eyes, you say, 
you um, you stretch. So you say Baruch Hashem Olokinu Melech Haolam Matir Asurin. You get dressed. You say Baruch Hashem Olokinu Melech Haolam Malbish Arumim, and so on and so forth. And when you when it when it comes to Shasali Kol Tzarki, while you're tying your while you're putting on your shoes, well, you, you have to have clean hands. But you make sure that when your hands when while you're tying your your shoes, you say this bracha. Practically in halacha, we don't rule like that. Practically, we rule that according to the Alter Rebbe, at least, um, and that is our custom. And I believe that's for uh, that's the halacha for most for most uh, um, for for almost everybody that we get dressed, do everything properly, and then afterwards we say all the brachot. It reminds me of a cute little story that uh, when I was a shliach in upstate New York. Is a, a good friend of mine uh, was totally, unfortunately, far from Yiddishkeit. But I got him, Baruch Hashem, to buy a pair of tefillin and, and to put them on. A couple years later, I came to visit from Israel and we schmoozed a little. And he, and he says, uh, I say, Alex, how you doing? We, 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 uh, we, we schmoozed. And uh, so I said, how are the tefillin doing? He says, Rabbi. I'm telling you, ever since we spoke, I put on the tefillin every day, even before I get dressed. <laughs> I get up, and the first thing I do is I put on the tefillin. So I smiled, and I said, Alex, you're an amazing guy, and he really is. I said, you know what, but just it's, it's wonderful that you do the tefillin right away, but it's probably a good idea to for, first to get dressed and then to wash your hands. Uh, you know, when you wake up, first you wash your hands, and I told them a few other things to start with, and then the tefillin can wait for five or six minutes, and then you put on the tefillin. But in any case, uh, regarding the the uh, the shoes, the bracha for the shoes is sha'asali kol tarki. So even though you don't say the word na'alayim, shoes, in the bracha, nevertheless, sha'asali kol tarki is the bracha, which is done while, like, it's it, you have in mind, for the putting on the shoes. So the simple meaning is that the shoes is usually the last thing that you put on. So what finalizes, what uh, um, is all inclusive of all of the previous um, uh, preparing preparations is the putting on the shoes. It's like the culmination. But on a deeper level, Shasali Koltzarki, that you've done, Hashem has prepared for me all of my needs, is brought out in the shoes. So there must be something special with the actual putting on uh, of the shoes. And what can we learn from this special um, bracha? And what can we learn from the whole idea of, of, of the shoes? So we have to step back a little bit and to see when it was the first time in history that we that we had the, that we uh, we talked about that, that we had shoes. That was. Before Adam and Chava, Adam and Eve, before they were in Gan Eden, before they were actually thrown out of Gan Eden, um, for eating from the tree of knowledge, um, they didn't have shoes. But then once they ate from the tree of knowledge, uh, one of the curses that Hashem placed upon human being, the kotz v'dardar tatzmiachlach, that the earth would become much more coarse. Apparently before then, the earth was much more soft. And so, therefore, people could could uh, walk around much easier. But now we need to have protection because there are um, uh, the the earth is very hard, and there are thorns, and there are all kinds of stones on the on the on the ground. Therefore, we need to protect ourselves more, and we need to have shoes. What does that mean? It's not just technical technical that um, at that time. That's when we needed to start uh, uh, putting on shoes. But rather that it's the shoes is connected with the subject of it's, it has a very a very a very special connection with uh, a, a very important it plays an important role in the life of a person. What does the shoes express? It expresses that the person should always look at themselves to be. Um, it's like an expression. Uh, the expression in English is a little different. The, the expression in English is on the. Walking on the clouds, in Hebrew they say, um, in Hebrew they say tefach me'alakarka. When someone is 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 happy and he's, he's proud and he's walking tall, then he's like a uh, a uh, a few inches above above the ground, a tefach above. So 
um, what happens when a person wears shoes? That's exactly what happens. It lifts up a person from a, being above the ground. So when we look at, at the ground to be something that we step on, something that's chorus and physical and mundane and, and uh, unimportant. Um, so then in, if we look at it in those terms, what does a shoe do? The shoe lifts up a person higher than, than, than the ground. So the message is that a person should guard their uniqueness and their and their specialties as a Jew which has a godly neshama. Don't allow yourself to get too deep involved into the artsiyut, into the the um, the chorusness of the world. Well, there has to be some kind of division between a person and the and the material and the and the and, and the materialism of the world. There's no question that we're not supposed to push it aside. We have to... There's no question that we're not supposed to push it aside. We do need to uh, get involved with the world. But the first thing is to realize the first step, no pun intended, the first step is to lift yourself above the world. Once it's clear that a Jew stands above the world, above the clouds, however you want to word it, then we're, we're happy to, to, uh, to be all welcoming and, and, and inclusive and uh, so on and so forth. So back to the question that we asked earlier. So this is the idea of the of the bracha that we say, Baruch atah Hashem alokeinu melech haolam sali kol tzarki. Even though uh, the, the, the shoes seem to be so unimportant, nevertheless, it's the shoes that helps a person to serve Hashem cold turkey with all of his needs. Because as we said earlier, that the, the shoes lifts up a person to be a, 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 on a higher level. Just as an example, a person is different than an animal. An animal, the head is the same level as, as the body and the hind. The, by a person, the, 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 the head is above. So in other words, the concept of a person realizing that the head is above and the head is supposed to be into holier things and the, the lower part of a person's body should be, can be involved with more materialistic things. So therefore, this is the bracha that lifts us up and realizes that when we have the shoes and the message of the shoes, then we have basically everything. And therefore, the Talmud tells us that when a, a person that has shoes is considered a Adam, a person, because without shoes, a person can quickly lose their their human aspect to that uh, to themselves, um, and to get too much in, um, into uh, materialism and lose their 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 human um, specialty. So, why does the bracha shasali kaltzarki only go um, <clears throat> now? The story is told that one time the Tzemach Tzedek, the third Chabad Rebbe, once came into the shul and asked his students what they want to hear. Do you want to hear a mimer, a Hasidic discourse, or do you want to hear a story? So because it was uh, rare that the Tzemach Tzedek should offer, should suggest to tell a story, they understood that he really wants to tell a story. So they said, of course, please, we'd like to hear a story. So he began to tell a story, a story of a Jew, that he owned uh, uh, an inn, and he rented it, he hired it out to another Jew. Uh, uh, one year passed, and he was supposed to pay his rent, but the renter did not have enough money, and he owed a great amount of debt to the owner. Another year passed, and he did not pay the amount of, 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 of rent. And so the, the owner of the, of the inn went to his Rebbe and asked him what to do with this, uh, with this renter who is not paying his dues. So his Rebbe listened and said, he said, the, the renter is a poor guy with a big family and the inn is the basic uh, source of income for the little bread, little food that he has. So I think you should, you should have Rahmanus, you should have 
uh, mercy on him and let him be there for free without, without paying. And the same thing happened the next year. And once again, the owner of the inn came to his, to his Rebbe and asked him what to do. He, there's a limit of how much Rachmanus, how much um, mercy he can have. The third, and he told him the same thing to, keep, to let him have it. The third year, a third time this happened. And the owner decided to act on his own. And he said to the renter, I'm sorry, you're going to have to leave and find yourself another source of income. After 120, the owner of the, of the inn came to the heavenly court and the heavenly court wanted to judge him unfavorably that he threw his own his a brother a fellow Jew out of his out of his inn that was the little bit of parnasa that he got even though he heard from his rebbe that he should have mercy upon him um and so the owner of the inn he said i'm sorry but the angels that are coming to to rule against me they don't have any clue of what it means to 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 to, uh, to need money, they live in the higher worlds, and they don't have this test of having to uh, to live and to pay for things. So they don't have the right to judge me unfavorably. His his, and they brought him in front of the Beit Din, of the Beit Yosef, the Bach, and his son-in-law the Taz three great Talachic authorities which were already which with Nishamas which had already passed on but they were in this world so they were able to appreciate the subject uh, um, from a different angle and they also wanted to rule him unfavorably however also, for what they said, um, uh, this individual, the owner of the inn, had a complaint. He said, "You're already here for many years in Ganadin, in the world to come, in, in the in the in the, in heaven, and so therefore you've forgotten already the great challenges that that's right now in the, living in this world." And so at this point, the Tzemach Tzedek turns to his students and asks, No, what do you think? Do you think he's right? So the, the Hasidim said, the, the Rebbe should say. And they understood that at this time, the Tzemach Tzedek, was, he had received this, this uh, challenge of, the, of, uh, of giving a rule um, of, of, uh, of this neshama. And the Tzemach Tzedek called out, the, the Neshama is right. The Neshama is right. The Neshama is right. The Tzemach Tzedek ruled and freed this Neshama from being judged unfavorably, and he, he, which is a great zechut, and it's very, very difficult to, to understand that a Neshama, after it leaves this, uh, this world, that it should not have to go through any, any kind of suffering. Um, because the suffering up there is is, is terrible, so the, uh, the 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 point is to be able to give to find favor and to be able to free up this neshama. So from here we see the great uh, challenges that, that we have, uh, the neshamas in this world have, and to remember that the the materialism, the the materialistic uh, money and things that we do are not the tachlis, are not the ultimate. It's a great challenge. To, to be able to separate ourselves from the materialism of this world and to lift ourselves uh, above above the ground, and that is the 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 objective. Uh, that is the purpose of the shoes to be able to lift us up. That we should be a little less connected to, to the materialism of the world, and we should be able to lift ourselves up and to uh, to allow more for the avat Yisrael. For example, in that case. He probably may have left his friend in the inn, but uh, unfortunately, Hashem put us in this world that we we uh, that we have all kinds of materialistic cravings, and therefore, it's a nonstop challenge to be able to to be focused 
that we should that we should connect ourselves much more to spirituality and much less to materialism. I'd like to spend a couple of moments, like I start uh, tonight, uh, Shabbos, the sixth of Shvat, is the 18th yard site of my late uncle Chazi Goldberg, who was unfortunately murdered uh, in a terrorist attack. Um, tomorrow morning at a quarter to nine, it's going to be a, uh, 18 years, which was right on Aza Street, uh, on the corner of our Lazarov on bus number 19. And um, it's very, very difficult. You know, um, I, 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 when I was here a year beforehand in Eretz Yisrael, he was my only family, Uncle Chazi and his wife and children, or Baruch Hashem, uh, here now with us. And unfortunately, he had to go through this hell and... Um, it's probably a greater hell for all of us that we are here and we have to suffer and hopefully his neshama is in a much, much uh, great, greater place. So the, the point that I'd like to say is I'd like to connect it with the number 18. And number 18 is chai. Chai means life. At, a, at first glance, a person might think, well, what kind of life is this? When a person was at, at the age of 41, he was uh, murdered. And uh, his oldest was 16. His youngest was a year and a half. I remember I was at his youngest uh, bris, at his youngest son's uh, bris when we were here in, in Eretz Yisrael um, a, a, year and a, a year and a half before his, his murder. And um, it just, you know, it, 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 there's no words to explain how the, 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 the deep feeling of pain from the, that, uh, that he had to go through and his family is going through until this very day. Um, you heard right, until this very day, it's an open wound which, which is, is, is un, unexplicable. And so what kind of chai are we talking about? My grandmother, my uncle's mother, may she live long and be healthy. Bezrat Hashem, I spoke to her yesterday to try to strengthen her. And, and uh, her, if there's one thing in her life that's so great is number chai. She's very, everything is with chai, chai, chai. Everything is with the number Chai. She's all into life. Baruch Hashem. Hashem should bless her. She's full of life. Um, and Hashem should give her many more happy and healthy years. Amen. And so one can ask, what does this difficult day have to do with life, with, with, with Chai? And I thought to myself that just a couple of weeks ago, we learned about Yaakov Avinu. And it doesn't say that Yaakov died. It says that he was buried, and obviously on some level he passed away. But the Talmud says, Yaakov lo met. Yaakov did not pass away. What does that mean, Yaakov lo met? And the Gemara itself asks in the next line, V'chi b'chdi, softu safdaya, chantu chantaya, kavru kavraya? The, to- the Torah itself says that they eulogized him, and they embalmed him, and they, the, the Egyptians, and they, uh, they, they buried him. So well, how could you say that 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 uh, Yaakov lo met, Yaakov did not die, and the answer is that that ma zaro b'chayim af hu just like his children are alive, so too he is alive. In other words, there is a life which is way beyond the whole idea of of uh, of uh, uh, there's a whole idea of life which is way beyond. Um, uh, what we know life to be in this world life of course is also what it is in this world but it's not only life is also a spiritual life a spiritual world life is also uh, living in the in, in the olam haba and mainly the Talmud itself says that through the fact that his students and his children are alive here in this in, in this world, that is true life. So in other words, it's not only life theoretically in a spiritual sense, but moreover, it's a life in a riddle, in literal sense because the way we know life to be in this world, the person has a continuation. And so it's almost as if by the fact that the person has, has um, uh, children, Baruch Hashem, and grandchildren now, and people that follow along in his ways, um, that is a great, a great sense of life, and we hope and pray that very soon we, that he has Tchiatametim, the revival of the dead, together with all of the other Sadikim and the Kedoshim, especially those that have passed away 
um, Al Kiddush Hashem for, sanctif- for sanctification of Hashem's name. And I just want to mention one more thing, which is very interesting, that my uncle of blessed memory, and you can look this up online on Google, uh, he used to have a he used to have a a, a weekly co- a column in the Jewish press middle page. Till today, on the, in the uh, on the top of the middle page, it says in memory of Chazi Goldberg, and he was a pioneer. He was uh, um, one of the first people, literally 20, 25 years ago, that spoke openly about abuse um, uh, in the Jewish world including for uh, women and children. And this should be a special zuchut, a special merit for him, because he, that, this was his work. He, he was a social worker, and because he saw from the inside what was happening, he was one of the first people who wrote about it, spoke about it, wrote emails about it on his weekly email, and a lot of things, a lot of those things are, are already uh, recorded and and you can read and you can, it's, it's unbelievable that even till today uh, the Jewish world in a sense is struggling with this idea, and so um, it should be a, there should be no more um, chas v'shalom. There, sh- there should be no no more murder, no more terror. There, there should be no more abuse in any community for anyone. No one deserves this idea of, of abuse. If a person feels that they have that they're tempted, then they need to, or they don't know how to control themselves, they need to go for help. Because there is help, especially today. There, there are people that are that are are, are trained um, to, to to help people. Everyone can, as we talked at great length, um, uh, um, just a couple of weeks ago. And Hashem should 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 give, give a straight a, a bracha for my uncle's family. It's also Shashi's grandfather's yard site tomorrow on the same day. And so uh, there should be only Besarot Tovot, there should be only be good news. Bezrat Hashem, to, uh, t- this evening we'll have Minchat Chabad at 4.25. Tomorrow morning is Chasidut at uh, 8.30, I'm sorry, at 9 o'clock. 9.30 is davening, and there's going uh, with a basic meal. Uh, Rabbi Krieger is doing, the, is doing the, the, uh, this Kiddush in memory, I believe, of one of his parents. And so please, please come and join us. And Tuesday evening, we're going to have a big Fabreng in English in honor of Yud Shvat, in honor of the 10th of Shvat, which is the yard site of the previous Rebbe, and the 72nd yard site of the previous Rebbe, and the, and the anniversary of when our Rebbe assumed leadership of Chabad. Thank you for joining us. Only Besrotovot, good news in our community and of all of Am Yisrael. All the best.